Ink Ribbon. Aside from conquering the globe, Lara has also conquered the gaming market, appearing on almost every console imaginable. I mean seriously, she's been on every console. So it shouldn't be too much of a surprise that she had a slew of handheld games on the Game Boy. But as we know, the bread and butter of Tomb Raider is the console releases, aka the AAA, big gun, full experience, mega ultra games. One would argue that Tomb Raider probably wouldn't translate well to 2D, but that didn't stop the developers from trying. So today I thought it'd be fun to go back and take a look at these spin-offs, see how they've aged, and appreciate how far games and technology have come since the 90s. And to help me out with today's video is Steve of War, who has a Tomb Raider channel filled to the brim with love and dedication to the Tomb Raider franchise. Now, we've got four games to look at, but let's just go over them in order of release, starting with the self-titled Tomb Raider game for the Game Boy Color. Tomb Raider, also called Tomb Raider the Nightmare Stone in some regions, was the first ever attempt at both a handheld Tomb Raider game as well as a 2D adaptation of the gameplay, and for what it was, it wasn't actually that bad. Obviously the graphics are a bit dated, but remember, this was on the Game Boy Color, which had some extreme limitations. The game starts off with some static renders and text to portray the story, which I have to admit are surprisingly cool. and. Basically, all you need to know is that Lara needs to get an artifact called the Nightmare Stone to stop bad guys from awakening a god called Qua Quaxet? Qu Quazet? It's not a real word, so pronounce it however you want. Lara is able to perform a surprising amount of moves in this version, like backflipping off ladders, shooting while crouching, and my favorite, drunkenly stumbling into walls and falling down. She will do this over and over and over again, and you quickly learn to slow down. I'd say that's probably the biggest difference in gameplay from the console versions, is instead of stylistically jumping and shooting and being acrobatic, instead you just want to take things slow. Just a nice and easy stroll through the 14 levels this game provides. Next we have the direct sequel to this game, Tomb Raider, Curse of the Sword. Following the exact formula of the sequels in the franchise, this entry uses the same engine as the previous one, but with new elements added like monkey bar traversal, a much clearer interface, and a much more refined and streamlined style of gameplay too. There is also a lot more story this time around, with the game taking place mostly in New York and also adding four brand new characters. There's Jane, Lara's friend who works at the museum, Pino Lamour, a shaman that lives in the subways, with a name that sounds like an off-brand bottle of white wine or something, Bokor, who is the second in command of a mysterious cult, and Madame Pavot, an evil magician who rose to power using black magic. Really? You re want me to read this? Okay, I'll make the noise. Fine. Ooh. God, I feel dirty. This one actually has some really cool levels, with some interesting moments to help make it stand out. Like this dramatic chase along the rooftops under a time limit that ends with a boss fight under the Statue of Liberty, and Lara falling from a helicopter yelling "Arg!" Poetry. So yeah, that's pretty much this game in a nutshell. So if you're ever in the mood to give the Game Boy Color games a go, then I'd say that this one would be the better option. At least in Ink Ribbon's opinion. I ain't played that shit. <laughs> Now we move into a new hardware generation, the Game Boy Advance, one of the best made handhelds ever. And with the new handheld came a new, more robust Tomb Raider game called Tomb Raider The Prophecy. Prophecy is what made me want to make this video in the first place. This game is so good and is, in my opinion, the best 2D handheld Tomb Raider game there is. Well, for a while it was anyway. Prophecy is fantastic, but there are two things that really hold this game back. There's not really much of a story, unfortunately, and it's repetitive. Climb a thing, dodge a trap, flip a switch, open a door, go through the door, kill an enemy, and repeat. Thankfully this game uses a level password system that is pretty easy to remember, words like memo, or monk, or hell, so you can jump around to try different levels if you want to play it that way. 
Now, that doesn't mean it isn't fun, and it has a lot of cool moments. The best thing from this game is, rather than a side-scrolling perspective, they opted for an isometric top-down view which gives the game a very 3D feel, and the aesthetics of Tomb Raider are all present here. Lara's got her attitude, her guns, and even some of her original sound effects. She also has one of the most overly dramatic fall deaths in the entire series. If you're a Tomb Raider fan, then you've most likely played Legend, which was the first reboot that the series had from Crystal Dynamics and was released on pretty much every console available at the time, including the Game Boy Advance. The best way I can describe this game is, Hey mom, can I have Tomb Raider Legend? No, we have Tomb Raider Legend at home. So yeah, this game isn't bad per se, but after Prophecy the gameplay feels like an enormous leap backwards. There's just a lot of little quality of life issues that add up to it being a hot mess to play sometimes. Things like Lara not grabbing ledges when she's supposed to, or not grabbing ledges because she won't put her freaking guns away. Though that just could be me being thick, I don't know. The story of Legend is still here, but is presented with comic book style scenes that work pretty well given the limitations at hand. There's also some cool features I really wasn't expecting to be here either, like some environmental objects like rocks, swinging ropes and other stuff all having physics tied to them. The collectibles are still present here, but instead of unlocking costumes, they unlock gallery items and minigames. So to sum up this port of Legend, it's most of the features of the full game, but haphazardly crammed into a tiny cartridge. But there is one thing Lara can do in this version that she can't do in the console versions. Majestic. So there you go. That was a little spotlight shining on some of the old games of yesteryear that are what they are. I'm sure some of you owned at least one of these back in the day, but probably never finished it because it was too hard. Or did you? Let me know down in the comments what you guys thought of this video and if there are any other game franchises that had handheld spin-offs like these. A big thank you to Steve of War for collaborating with me on this video. If you love Tomb Raider, his channel is definitely worth checking out and I will put a link to his down in the comments. Until next time, I'm Kai Morgan and as always, thanks for watching Ink Ribbon. And a very special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Your extra support means the world to me and helps me keep making content for you guys.